Hello, and welcome to um, the Open Telemetry Technical Committee panel. I'm Rin Mancuso. Um, I work in the end user working group, and you, today we're going to meet the members of the technical committee. Um, Jack Berg, Ludmilla, um, your, it was so new, I don't know her last name, Josh Thurith, and Riley Yang. And um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves um, with our first question, which is, what brought you to be on the technical committee? How did you make this journey? And what are you most excited about working on this year in open telemetry? All right, I'll start us off. I'm Jack. Uh, I work for New Relic, and I got involved with Open Telemetry through the the Java project. I'm a maintainer for Open Telemetry Java. Um, I joined that project maybe three years ago, or something like that. And um, so my my kind of goal when I got into Open Telemetry was to uh, reduce the amount of time that you know you, uh, you you had to choose between using an open source piece of software and um, it, that, that wasn't really kind of ready, like logs and metrics and were not stable when I joined the project. They were still ideas. And so I wanted to accelerate uh, the stability of those. And that's, uh, that's what I did. I, I worked on the log signal and the metrics extensively uh, and kind of drove the implementations for those along with some other folks in, in Java. And that led me to the technical committee eventually. So. The, the follow-up for the question was, what are you most interested in uh, working on this year? I'm working on uh, configuration, file-based configuration uh, for open telemetry. So, you know, uh, programmatic configuration is, uh, you, right now your options are programmatic configuration or environment variable-based configuration. And programmatic is very hands-on and, and environment variable is not very expressive. So file configuration is the best of both worlds. It's supposed to be expressive and exhaustive but declarative, so you don't have to, you know, go write code in, in, in a language to, to express what you need to your SDK to do. So I'll pass it on now. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, you met me. I'm Ludmila. I gave a talk earlier. Um, I work at Microsoft. I work on Azure SDKs. I started working on observability in 2016, I think. Uh, my manager asked me, okay, you just came back with, uh, from the service development. What is the hardest problem? And I told him, okay, log correlation. And I think I still work on it, uh, what, eight years after. Um, so uh, we've done some non-open telemetry, non-open tracing, our custom thing in uh, Microsoft for a while. But then uh, there we were part of open census, and eventually we were very happy that um, open telemetry came out of the result of it. Um, so I was very interested uh, in library instrumentations and messaging scenarios and stuff like that. Uh, so this brought me to my current team uh, and I'm still super interested. Uh, the more we look into this, the more uh, things are not there yet, like semantic conventions, like what I actually collect. How do we instrument and stuff? And this is what I'm really excited about. That's what I'm driving. I've just joined to see. Thank you for inviting me. I'm super excited about it. Um, and I really want to continue working in the space of semantic conventions. We're going to stabilize messaging and databases this year. I hope uh, everything looks like we should be able to do this. Uh, I hope it will be less painful than HTTP. Um, and yeah, and then maybe we will see. There are so many other areas in open telemetry. The semantic conventions is like, like Trask mentioned recently. If it's something about computers, it's in the semantic conventions. Uh, so I hope all people will contribute. We definitely need your expertise. Um, yeah, thank you. Hey, everyone. M my name is Riley, and I work for Microsoft. So I started as a C++ compiler developer and eventually worked on debugger profiling until I realized uh, the world needed tracing protocols. So I kind of invented my own distributed tracing protocol. And after that, I started to regret. And I spent years trying to work with the W3C trace context standard, trying to embrace that and, and use that to converge all the existing things that we have. And 
After that, I worked uh, in the Open Census project as a Python Open Census maintainer. So I, like, I moved to Open Telemetry on the first day. Has, so has been there actually working. It's been five years, and uh, I worked on many Open Telemetry projects, including Open Telemetry uh, .NET C++ and Open Telemetry Python, and and I helped the semantic convention, especially the the donation of the Elastic Common Schema to Open Telemetry Semantic Convention, the convergence there. And uh, my main reason of becoming a technical committee member was the Matrix API SDK specification, because after tracing me being stuck there, and I volunteered to help. And just to answer a question mentioned earlier this morning about do you have to be a TC member to make progress, I feel I probably made more progress before being a TC member, because after being a TC member, I try to help people, and I just realized there are too many things happening, and I don't have the domain expertise. So I'm more willing to help people to be more successful instead of driving my own agenda. And regarding my focus, I, I think we have a reasonable set of metrics offerings, but it's not done yet. If you look at how people use metrics SDK for high cardinality issue, or uh, are we done with like the best practice? And do we have the best performing metrics SDK? Probably no. Like recently, we have one TC member who's the father of Jaeger. He's trying to switch from premises client to open telemetry client, and he's noticing performance job. So we know their bound instrument we've been working on, and we haven't just made that to the specs. I feel my immediate focus would be getting open telemetry more reliable and performant for the large scale enterprise applications to take a bet on. Then there are many additional things I want to explore. For example, uh, how do we help the open telemetry solution to be available for extreme cases like the embedded devices or super large scale applications? And in addition, I think more importantly, when you think like how open telemetry started, we started by saying people don't have an API that is vendor agnostic. They don't trust that. Like they have to pick a vendor specific thing and only send data to that place. But then we have the API, we have a stable and performant or reasonably performant SDK. Then we have the problem of it's like it makes it possible for people to instrument the application, but we don't have the same language. People will just send whatever data they want, and you won't be able to interpret the data. And this is why we made progress on semantic convention. And we've been successful so with the API semantic convention. Now we have libraries like we may not share this morning. The libraries, frameworks, operating system, they start to generate telemetry. And you as a developer with single line of configuration can enable it. Now we have a real problem. We've made it so easy for people to enable telemetry. And I've seen customers like writing a single line of code that's costing $3 million per day. Or like they can easily enable telemetry so they got privacy issue, they got security like credential leak. So now it's time for us to think about how we help people to collect telemetry in a reasonable way that is efficient, that's cost effective, and yet compliant. So, so we bring this like, it's very hard to get telemetry to a place where it's very easy to get telemetry and maybe overuse it. Now it's time for me to think about how we can actually control the balance and, and make people's life easier. Thank you. So I'm uh, Josh Surrett. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I don't actually remember how I got on the TC, and no one has noticed yet that I'm still there. So <laughs> it's working out for me. Um, uh, I, I currently work at Google Cloud. I do observability there. But I, uh, I come from the Scala language community, and I just love open source. So actually, Open Telemetry was a project where um, I, I literally joined the team at Google because I had an opportunity to work here, and I saw that the community was strong, that it had lots of vendors, and I'm like, this is a project that's going to succeed, and I really want to get behind it. Um, so that's kind of what led me to that. I had a little bit of experience with observability for Scala because uh, if you don't know, we reinvented every single library in Java, but in Scala because Scala. And uh, we needed to observe our you know, thread system that we had designed. And we had designed it to be as performant as possible, which means there's no observability. Um, <laughs> So it was it was wonderful trying to figure that out. Um, we ended up doing Java agent tricks and stuff. Anyway, so I got into observability from that. Um, within the TC, 
you know, I did uh, an initial, I, I was responsible for the metrics data model specification protocol, and I did the initial implementation in Java that Jack cleaned up for me. Um, started the semantic convention group with Riley, kicked off a bunch of processes, which Ludmilla cleaned up for me. Um, <laughs> so I've, I don't know what the next thing we're gonna do. Whoever wants to clean up entity sig, let me know. Um, yeah, but that, that's kind of the next thing. I'm, I'm, so, uh, <laughs> Tigran and I are working on this entity sig where um, there's a lot of problems with resource detection right now. Um, I don't know if many of you know this, but every single SDK is not compliant with a specification by need, right? The specification actually isn't something you can implement and have a good user experience, and so we wanna fix that. Um, the entity SIG is trying to figure out how to fix that, really dive into that problem deeply, and kind of solve it. Um, I'm also excited about semantic inventions, but you've heard about that from everybody so far, so I, I don't feel like we need to dive into it, but I will make a shout out to the Weaver project, which is about code genning your instrumentation. I really think that the future of OTEL right now is on tackling the problem of instrumentation and making all of the people who are adopting it have a good experience and really enjoy their life. We don't want people to adopt open telemetry and then realize there's a whole bunch of flaws or problems or that sort of thing and, and, and run into unsolvable problems. So like Riley said, there's a lot of issues with instrumentation and I really think semantic conventions is that needed component that we had to kick off and stabilize to get stable instrumentation. But I also wanna give a shout out to this community because um, Semantic Conventions would not succeed without you. We have 12 active groups in it right now, um, of which if you look at the four of us kind of involved um, here, <laughs> there's no way we could be leading 12 efforts. That just doesn't happen, right? Um, I think the GC was mentioned this before. The reason we're able to take on 12 individual semantic convention groups is because we have so many people in this community that are putting work into the community and making it better, right? And that's actually what I'm most excited about with Open Telemetry is like the, the energy and the vibe and everyone kind of getting involved and trying to make changes. Our job here is to make sure you're successful. We barely have time to really do anything ourselves. It's mostly coordinating. Anyway, I think that's it for me. Hello, um, so GC was asked a question earlier that we said was dangerously close to a technical committee question, so we're gonna answer it. Um, that question was, and I'm working from my memory, so I apologize if this is not precise, but how does the project find a balance in terms of developer experience between having a great experience for each language and having the same experience for each language so it's easier for folks to learn across languages? Um, what is your role in this balance as a technical committee member? And how do you wish that other contributors from other SIGs would help you in that balance? Uh, I can start us off. Maybe other people can add to this, but I think Daniel mentioned a lot of good content earlier. So, um, you know, we write the specifications in a in a generic way. We try to uh, avoid language that would suggest any sort of language specific idioms. Um, and uh, we, I, I think, probably the, the the most important thing that we do is we bring a lot of people to the table that have expertise in different languages and can kind of call us if we're doing something in like a two. Uh, like object-oriented uh, uh, manner, uh, or or too much of a functional manner, we just kind of steer clear of that and and, and kind of raise the language up. Um, and then the other thing we do is we have this kind of we have this maturity life cycle of any sort of specification feature, um, where you know things start off as experimental and then they have to be uh, implemented in a variety of languages before they reach stability. And we typically require that the those uh, those implementations, the language implementations, are you know across languages that are quite different from each other. So you know uh, it's not that interesting that .NET and Java both implement uh, you know a particular feature. We don't learn much about any of the uh, the kind of sharp edges we might encounter because those languages are so similar. So um, yeah, that's what I'll say about that. Yeah, so in addition to what Jack said, I, I can share some of the things I've seen in the past. So first, in order for any spec to get to stable state, we require two or three prototypes in different languages. And as Jack mentioned, 
we decided that we're not going to pick similar languages. So for example, if we pick Java, then we'll say we have to pick something not a compiled language. And that ma makes sure we get enough feedback. The second thing is for each individual language to uh, stabilize their API SDK. For the public interface, we have a process they can seek out from the TC review. So the technical committee will send a member there. I've been doing review for like Go and PHP and another language I've got, maybe Python. Uh, so, so when you go through that process, you kind of see the similar problem. Like, do you want the, the language to sit as idiomatic as possible, or you want to have some consistency? And because the TC member typically they work across multiple projects, they're very familiar with spec, so we tend to be more pushing from having that consistency. And, and also people have experience working in the industry, so they understand they have the empathy that language should be different. So I expect the language maintainers to take more position from, hey, this is what we think the best for the language, and this is what we heard from our users, and the TC play a kind of rule uh, uh, from the different angles. So we're saying this is a cross-language consistency, then people will will look into a particular issue and they will probably take some debate. And this will help to have a reasonable balance. And I would say, uh, as maybe Daniel mentioned this morning, it's a spectrum. You can see some people coming from the pure academic background. They want purity. They want everything to be as uh, close to the language idiomatic way. Well, from other people who come from the back background of, I just learned OpenTelemetry Java. I want to use OpenTelemetry JavaScript. I think they should be 100% the same. So we, we probably try to cover uh, the spectrum as much as possible, knowing that we won't be able to make 100% of the user base happy. So I always say something like 80, 20% is a typical balance problem in engineering, and we're no different than that. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> add one last thing, which is that I think um, the specification development is just really hard in general. It's a hard problem. Um, if you were to ask someone, an observability user, right, what they want in terms of performance, they want zero memory usage. They want zero CPU overhead, right? They want 100% observability of everything and everything collected, right? That's like your ideal. That's not realistic. So you try to go as small as possible. The other thing is, what are some of the most important moments of observability? When the app is crashing, <laughs> you have to get the data out, right? So you have to design that SDK so that when everything's crashing and everything else is failing, you still work. And so the way that we try to do this across the different languages, um, if you look at how the tracing spec was written, it if you read it by the letter of the spec, you'll see a Java interface. But if you read it by the spirit of the spec, right, what you see is a set of methods and utilities and conventions that people should think about. But really, the, the verbiage is loose enough for you to do what you need to do in your language to deal with those hard scenarios. Because actually, the language author is in the hardest spot compared to a spec author because of all of those crazy complications that they're being forced to deal with. They need to make it look like Otel, they need to make it look like their language, and they have to deal with some of the hardest situations and environments in software, in my opinion. So like, it's, it's just, it's a hard balance. What you've seen us do when we stabilize the spec is generally alleviate friction in wording that is too restrictive from the initial prototypes. And I think that's kind of the approach we've taken right now is we might start a little more restrictive and then loosen as we need to based on what we learn from different languages. And we're trying to not, if you look at the metric spec versus the trace spec, we started a bit lighter with metrics. And I think logging is kind of similar in that vein. Like we're now starting with looser specs um, because we've learned a, a better starting point. I have one last remark to add. Uh, so most of the users would be happy if they don't need to write any open telemetry code. They just enable it and it works. And in this sense, I think uh, w what my focus is is that the data they get does not depend on the language as much as possible. Uh, so they can come from .NET uh, world and they can start monitoring and debugging their Java applications and understand what's going on there without knowing much about Java. And this is how they can learn the technologies behind that they use. So they can switch one messaging library to another and still be successful uh, in using this library. So 
Lovely. So we're about halfway through the panel, and um, we've got one more pocket question, and then we're going to open it up to questions from all of you. Um, so obviously, the project's been growing really fast over the last several years, and we'll folks who were around when the TC started will remember that the initial model was, we'll have divide all the SIGs between the TC members and make sure somebody's attending every SIG. Well, each of you could attend 10 SIGs, spend 10 hours of your week going to open telemetry meetings and still not attend all the SIGs at this point. So. How is the TC planning to empower the SIGs and individuals within the SIGs to support and extend the work of harmonizing the across the languages of open telemetry? Yeah, so I, I feel like Josh Suresh and I briefly covered that during the self-introduction. So one thing you, you will see TC uh, doing more, and that's something we've been doing is will help to start something, will help to facilitate something, uh, but we're not going to like spend all the time trying to move every single project. We try to grow the community members by identifying the project leaders. And what we really want is, number one, the TC should set example for people how to work efficiently with the community. And for people who are not very familiar with open telemetry, but they have domain expertise, we're happy to have them like jump started and then like we're very willing to delegate and give people certain support and power so they can actually help and drive things. And the TC is more emphasizing or focusing on making sure that particular work stream is aligned with the overall open telemetry direction instead of like two different SIGs trying to invent competing thing or some SIG trying to prioritize their uh, work without understanding the overall open time mission so things can still be connected and make sense. So in a nutshell, uh, the TC is more willing to help people to be more successful instead of us driving each individual TC member's agenda. Uh, so I was like, as there was a question earlier to the GC, which is like, what does the GC do? And I was just thinking to myself, what does the TC do? And so it's it's good to reflect on that. So it's written down in the community repository some somewhere what the actual roles and responsibilities are. But um, you know, in my own words, it's there's the specification repository. We're maintainers of that. We have merge rights to that. So that's like a concrete thing that we do. Um, another thing that we do is we review donation proposals. We do all the due diligence on that. So if anybody wants to add to the scope of the open telemetry project. The GC reviews the, the possible additions to the scope and then the TC does due diligence. That's another concrete thing. Um, we also, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> uh, we vote when there's conflicts. So, okay, so when, when, when things go wrong and a SIG can't come to uh, an agreement on a particular problem on its own, uh, the TC, there's this escalation process where you can ask the TC to intervene. And we don't like to do that. Like, we, we really only want to do that in uh, in a worst case scenario um, when all other options have been exhausted. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you actually, w one thing that the GC mentioned earlier is like, how do we add members to the TC? And when I think about the concrete responsibilities, I, I think, you know, do we need to add to the TC or do we need to properly empower people to be effective without necessarily having that TC like title? And uh, we just added this new role in the community. It's called uh, a spec sponsor. And I'm hoping that it star starts to solve some of these issues. So a spec sponsor, you know, we, we have these projects that the GC talked about. Projects and SIGs spin up and they require people to lead them, they require GC liaison, and they require like a TC sponsor. And so we're gonna open that up. We're gonna say it's not just the TC that can sponsor, it's also these other spec sponsors. Spec sponsors is this expanded group of like trusted collaborators. They've been around the project for a long time, they speak the language, they know the vocabulary, and they've done a lot of significant things, and we wanna we want to, you know, empower them to continue to do those great things and 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 take on additional scope. And so, you know, spec sponsors can sponsor projects. They can, uh, they have a, a very meaningful uh, uh, approver role in the specification. They, they, they got that green checkbox, which you know you get two of those, and you can merge a spec PR. So, 
Um, and spec PRs have the, uh, the ability to impact 11 different language implement Im implementations. So there's a lot of trust that goes into that. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, and I'm, I, don't, I don't think we've talked about this formally, but uh, I'm hoping we more isn't necessarily the answer, but like, you know, delegation is, is, is the answer, so. Just add to what Jack mentioned, I think there are two other concrete things that TCA has been doing. One is as OpenTelemetry is trying to get CNCF graduation state, uh, we take security seriously. And for some security vulnerabilities reported, uh, the TC will look into them secretly with the reporter and to understand the impact scope and coordinate uh, across multiple repositories to make proper fix. Sometimes it could mean we will secretly provide the fix and work with the major vendors and users to apply the patch before making the vulnerability public, uh, publicly available. The second thing I already mentioned is for individual language maintainers, when they finish the implementation, they can always look for the TC to help to review their implementation. And we'll send someone who's familiar with the language and also more familiar with the spec to work across the board, making sure things got well aligned. I'll also say for the language reviews, um, you know, I used Erlang once in college. I just huffed, I didn't really, you know, inhale. Um, but anyway, uh, I got to review Erlang and it was like enlightening. Like, this is actually something if you're interested in open telemetry and you want to learn a little bit, right? Um, go review the SDK implementations across languages because there's some interesting things you find out. And there's some really cool things that like people were doing out of the box. I think Erlang was the one that taught me that we should have a default UUID in every SDK that we provide out of the box. That's a thing Erlang does. Um, and that's where we started trying to push service instance ID, which again, actually Jurassi cleaned up for me um, after I kicked it off in, in tradition of my Odell contributions. Anyway. Okay, so we've got time for a couple of audience questions. Um, anybody? Five minutes. Okay, we've got five minutes. Anybody? Yes, Jurassic. Anybody else have a question before Jurassic? Since go for it. Perhaps for Josh, um, I see the entities and um, resource SIG as the first big refactoring that we have in a project. Um, once that is done, what is the next one? I'm sure other people will uh, jump in, but um, so I'm gonna, <laughs> we only have five minutes, so I'll try to be brief. Um, I think the foundation of open telemetry is context. Actually, the foundation is causality. What caused something? That's what you're trying to figure out. That's why we pass trace IDs to actually link causality. Context is core, context is king. Context is how you start an SDK. It's the most important initial implementation you look for, and that's when you do a code review of an SDK, that's the first thing you actually follow to make sure it works, right? One thing that we have failed to do because we specified things incrementally is blend all the signals together and really leverage the fact that we have context and do really cool things with context. I think um, the uh, baggage is one of, I think, the biggest travesties. You can't interact with it out of the box by default without manually changing instrumentation, right? We tried to push a little bit on that in the metric spec and we got some pushback. I think that you know, the next missing or, or like refactoring that needs to happen is basically around context propagation and leaning more into the fact that we now have a foundation for OTEL and the kind of observability and causal relationships we can derive from that. Anyone else? Yes, so. Do you have something? I think oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, I think to add to what Josh just said, uh, we do a great job with auto instrumentations and we can do a better job, uh, but what is hard is for users to enrich this telemetry or to change it in different ways, to fine tune it. And it's, uh, with 
the new uh, convenience or development experience uh, project, I hope we can start tackling these problems, like how users can customize this telemetry in a uniform way, and how they can add their application context uh, or data into the telemetry that's already collected for them by the libraries. I have to talk about span events. So uh, we have like a, we have a language problem. So we have, you know, I think Josh talked about incremental development of the project. Would we still have a span events API if we were starting from scratch today? I don't, I don't think so. I think we would have an events API, um, and you know, you would correlate those logs to the to, to the spans. Um, and so, uh, a lot of people are thinking about this thing. We just got to get the ball over the finish line. So, Ted. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at you. <laughs> uh, you don't need to be on the TC to get stuff done. We talked about how it actually hurts your productivity. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I feel I, as we're getting more success in open telemetry with more instrumentation libraries, we'll start to see more and more overly observed uh, like services or applications. And one important thing when you look at like how our body works, we don't observe everything. Like if I look at maybe Dan, I have my focus on him. Everything else seems blurry, but I know what's happening like generally. So I, I feel like open telemetry will eventually be in that state. And the the center of the gravity is open telemetry collector. So the key thing is you're able to process the data close to the source and you only send maybe highly aggregated or the summary data to the next hub then you have efficiency. So I, I feel like the more investment we're going to see from, from different layers of processing, instead of just collect all the data and send all of them to the backend and then make a central control there, especially when you think this, this world is dis distributed by nature. Like why would you decide to stop a deployment in a local data center by sending all the telemetry to a central place and then have the central place telling the local data center to stop deployment. You should be able to decide that within the local data center, even if you don't have internet connectivity to the global instance. So, so this is how I, I feel like open telemetry will eventually evolve. The API SDK is more like the foundation and eventually we'll see more value added on the collector and ingestion side. We're almost at the end, so I'm going to ask one more question. Where can contributors go to ask you more questions, to learn about what the TC is working on? So all the TC members are pretty active. Uh, you can either see them in some open telemetry meetings uh, if they drive particular SIG, or I, I, I believe like all of them are monitoring like Slack actively. So. If you want to reach out to any of them, first you can go to the Open Telemetry community page so you, so you see a list of all the TC members. Then you can reach out to them on Slack. Worst case, if you haven't heard from any TC member, you can just create a CVE and they'll get alerted on day one. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's our panel for the day. <laughs>